is just the craziest thing I've ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why we we keep getting put in these crazy situations? Welcome to this edition of Living Limitless. We're excited to come to you from the Hudson River. We're cruising up. Um, we went through New York a few days ago. We did take a, like a two day break. So I was, actually Caitlin and I both were kind of feeling sick and uh, we stopped for a little longer than we planned to. But back at it, uh, full of fuel, full of water. Our, our holding tank is empty. So we're gonna anchor the next few nights and take in everything that the Hudson has to offer here and just the, the sights and it's beautiful, it really is. This is Bannerman Castle, it's on the uh, Hudson River. It's a um, pretty cool building and it's, it's actually on its own little island. Um, I don't know how to actually pronounce the island, it's P-O-L-L-O-P or something like that, but check it out online if you're interested. But it's an old abandoned military warehouse, but pretty cool site, you know, here on the Hudson. Uh, just seeing that history and, uh, and some of the, the structures and such that are in the water and some of those that are still on the, the little island there. But pretty cool sight, pretty cool, uh, pretty cool things to see. Now cruising, cruising uh, up the Hudson River, and in the background here we have West Point, West Point Academy, pretty stinking cool. Always great to see the facilities and um, proving grounds for uh, our military, much respect. We appreciate that, although, go Navy, beat Army. <laughs> Here's our safe haven for about the next uh, next hour. Just gonna hide out here underneath this bridge. Thankfully, it doesn't seem to be any commercial traffic or really any traffic at all right now on the river. So we don't have to, even though I'm right in the middle of the shipping channel, there's nothing else out here. So and I don't even see anything on on uh, my chart plotter AIS or anything like that. So um, yeah, so we should be good to just hang out here wait for the storm to pass. I mean, we can see in the distance it's rain and really hard. Um, I think we were right on the edge of the storm where we turned around. So I'm hoping, you know, two things. One, that, you know, if the storm does pass over us, so that we're protected a little bit from this bridge. 
number two, that you know, hopefully we don't even need that protection that the storm is actually just kind of going north of us. So anyway, we'll let Mother Nature do her thing and um, trust her and, um, and we'll go from there. All right, it's pretty loud with the, uh, the rain hitting the top of the uh, Bemi and the Isinglass. But we are camped out here, storms coming over, raining pretty good in front of us and to our, uh, and to our stern. I'm just having to, uh, I'm pointed toward the direction of the, uh, or against the current flow. So I just have to give it a little throttle every now and again just to keep from getting dragged down river so that I can stay in position here right underneath this bridge. Starting to hear a little bit of thunder. Hang it out, staying safe. Craziest thing I've ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why we we keep getting put in these crazy situations? Well, I just stopped filming the other the other clip of of the storm and how crazy it was. And I swear, it's just like not even 30 seconds later, it's calm. Sun's coming out. Wind is gone. It's wow. crazy. I I tell you, the wind was blowing so hard. I felt it moving the boat up and down. It was not the waves, it was the wind. It was incredible. I, yeah, wow. I'm glad we stuck near the bridge. I'm I mean, other, other people may tell us that was the worst thing we could do, but I just didn't want to be out in the open. It was good to be by the bridge because I could see the pillars of the bridge. It gave me a point of reference. I had no other point of reference because I couldn't see, I couldn't see anything 100 feet in front of me, 100 feet behind me, but I could see the 100 feet to my left and to my right on my port and starboard side, the pillars to that bridge. I was able to give it some gas and, you know, and, and keep the boat, you know, stable, um, you know, through that. Wow, that was, that was nuts. Yeah, thankfully, I mean, yeah, the bridge was the right move for sure. So this is another part of the storm. This one actually is uh, behind us now. It's uh, it's crossing the Hudson River, but it's uh, yeah, it's crossing it behind us. Thankfully, yeah, the one that just went over top of us uh, was uh, was just as scary as that one looks. That was nuts. But um, yeah, it just goes to show. Always got to be uh, watching the weather and prepared. I'm yeah, thankful we made the right decision to turn around and go back under that bridge, but. We'd have kept going, you know. Who knows where uh, what would have happened? But um, all good. It's supposed to have uh, you know cloudy, but no rain until uh, for the next few hours, which is good. It gives us a chance to find a good safe spot to anchor for the evening and set that anchor really good. So <laughs> here we go. Life on a boat. say we're in the upper state of New York. We're heading into Albany, New York right now. Last couple of days have been uh, interesting. Very, one, very beautiful, very scenic. The, the New York 
the Hudson River is just it's it's a beautiful waterway and lots of lots of great sightseeing and and opportunities. You know, we unfortunately are not in a spot to you know stop and smell the roses as they say this early on in the trip. Um, we need to get into the into the Great Lakes and, and get through that. And we have some stops up that way that we want to make for sure. So we want to make sure we got plenty of time there, and then we have plenty of time from a weather perspective, that flexibility in our travel. All that being said, six, today uh, an exciting day in the sense that we will go through the Troy Federal Lock. We'll uh, do our best to record that. And then shortly after the Troy Federal Lock, we are going to hit what is called the Waterford Wall. And uh, it's a free wall. You, there is a fee for electric if you need electric. And it's first come, first serve. So we're a little nervous because it's pretty late in the day. And uh, we'll get there right around 7 p.m. So it's uh, 7 p.m., 7.30ish. So we're a little nervous about any spots being available on the wall at that time. We will see. So we're working on a backup plan if, uh, if that does not work out. Yesterday was an interesting day. We uh, spent the day basically dodging storms, so we didn't get to travel near as far. Another reason for our late start we didn't get to travel near as far as we had hoped. Plus, we had storms pretty late last night while at anchor. So, you know, we were up pretty late just making sure that uh, the boat wasn't dragging and that we weathered those okay. And we did. So it was uh, a great anchor. But we ended up sleeping in a little bit longer than, than um, I think would we originally would have needed to to get here much earlier. The other thing that held us back is we did have our dinghy out. We were towing our dinghy on the last segment. Uh, so we, we took the, the time to put the dinghy back up on the rack here on the uh, above, on the roof of the aft deck. That always takes a little bit of time. So it's, uh, <laughs> and it was, Sherry had some fun with uh, the dinghy from around the rear of the boat to the side of the boat where we hook up the davit to it to lift it. And uh, the current was so strong, it just kept, forcing it down there was one point I said here hand me the rope and I was up I was leaning over the aft deck reaching down to grab the rope she gave me the rope as soon as I got it and I went to pull on it I don't know the clasp or something came off of the hook inside the boat so there for a split second that dinghy was on its own starting to move down thankfully Sherry was able to run around transom on the swim deck and grab that boat at the last second otherwise uh, it, we just spent all day just trying to catch up with the dinghy <laughs> and retrieve the dinghy. So we got it and then we got it pulled back up, made sure that our lines were uh, our lines were clipped and secured pro pro appropriately and then got it got her up into place. All that being said, you know it takes a little bit to get that dinghy up in place so we get a little bit later start. so here we are. Good day though. nice light breeze which is helpful when it's it is pretty hot today makes the cruise a little bit easier thanks again for following along I hope you're enjoying our series and uh, like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing and come back and hit that notification bell you'll see when uh, our latest videos are available and you continue with us on each segment of our cruise enjoy thanks all
here's all the boats getting ready for transit across the uh, the flight of locks just outside of Waterford New York this is uh, what's affectionately called the Waterford wall it's affectionate because it's free uh, well, actually there's a little bit of a fee for electric but um, yeah, we stayed last night because one we got in pretty late last night we just got a spot on the part of the wall that didn't have electric so it was a free night for us and then this morning when a lot of the boats got up and left we slid up to a spot that does have electric so we have power tonight and uh, a little bit of R&R &R tonight just from Sherry's now feeling not well and so I think a little bit of maybe what Caitlin and I had earlier in the week but catching up with her so a little tough day to travel since the next step here is the first of a series of locks so here's the first one right there behind us we went through one yesterday that was the the troy federal lock this lock now we enter the new york canal water system yeah it's a series of locks it's like five to start and then there's several further down from that so it's a lot of locks and a lot of work got to be on your toes paying attention so it's uh it's not a it's not a restful day by any stretch and so we got to make sure that you know everybody on board is fresh and ready to go not feeling ill so our goal is to go through tomorrow morning hopefully we are all feeling well enough to do that and uh, continue on our journey headed toward lake ontario so looking forward to it So we ended up staying another day at the Waterford Free Wall. Um, crew still wasn't feeling the best. And, um, and it was only $10 for electric for the night. So it was $10 for another night and make sure we're okay. Plus today, uh, probably more than the crew not feeling the best because I think we could have fought through it. But um, the weather was very unpredictable and potential for really strong thunderstorms and yeah if you've been watching our videos in the past you know we've experienced a couple of those over the last month and on the water and not so much fun so we would rather not do that again so plan a little safe and anyway back to where i'm at right now i am on pebbles island water usually flows over those but it's dammed up right now here on this side so uh, probably not as pretty as it can be when you've got more water flowing across those, uh, those rocks. This is a part of the Mohawk River. This is the reason why we have the flight of locks that gets us from Waterford, New York to the Mohawk River. This is actually a part of the Erie Canal system. We will uh, hopefully be going through those first thing tomorrow morning. That's our plan right now. But today I'm just, um, Got a little bit of cabin fever. We did walk for breakfast this morning, and uh, but just went back to the boat, just kind of hanging out. So it's starting to get a little windy. So I'm gonna start heading back to the boat now, so I don't get caught in any kind of thunderstorms or anything on the scooter here. So. There is a little park here, right next to uh, lock number two. This will be the first lock that we go through tomorrow morning. This is a part of the park that's right next to it, but you can see the waterfalls and how much of a drop there is. There's that waterfall there, that one there. I'm standing on a bridge, a walkway, that gets you over to the lock itself. So I'm gonna go over and check it out, see if uh, I can get a good look inside of the lock itself that we'll be uh, headed down into, or we'll be going into and coming up on tomorrow morning. Looking forward to it. Check it out. So here's the lock that we'll be coming into. We'll be coming in that direction there and then coming across. And actually we'll be tying up to one of these uh, po poles here. We just wrap our line around the pole. And as the boat ri rises, the line rises with it, but it allows us to stay close to the wall so that we don't drift out into the center or bump into anybody else that may be in the lock with us at the same time. This is the little houses, uh, little buildings where the dock masters set up to do their work but you can see the difference in the level of the water you know we go from we go from this down here all the way down there and we get lifted up to right there and that's where we'll come out 
This is just lock one. There's a total of five locks in this flight of locks. So they're all really close together. In fact, if you look down the rear, I don't know if you can actually see the next one. Maybe it's the beginning to the next one, but they're pretty close together. It, this is what gets us up and over those rocks and those waterfalls and that dam that I was showing you a little bit ago. So pretty neat. This is the entrance to lock number three. So as we go through lock number two, you go down not very far at all and then you enter lock at number three that one looks like it has a pretty good elevation on it too so uh, i'm gonna go see if i can get a peek up top and inside that one as well one of the neat stops here at uh, lock number three is uh, a bit of a like a dry dock area so quite a few boats looks like they're owned by um waterford in here but it looks like uh you know some tugs a couple of other just service vessels um, that one there looks like a barge, more for a living, for people, uh, workers, that, so forth, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, just kind of hunker down there on dry dock. And there's a kind of a, a, like a little mini lock behind them. Those doors would open and this would flood. Those would all raise and then you could move them in and out. Close the doors, pump the water out, down they go. Yeah, pretty uh, neat <laughs> uh, process invention for making sure you got the, the right vessels to service these canals and the waters, waterways. One of the cool pieces of history uh, on this canal are these mules and they have uh, statues of these mules in just, just different various locations up and down the canals. But the, uh, there used to be a pathway that went along these canals and locks and the mules used to actually pull the boats through the canal system. So, you know, I don't know if that was before they were motor, you know, they had powered vessels or whatever, but yeah, I'm sure it just goes back to those days. But, but yeah, pretty cool. You see these, uh, it just, yeah, various spots along the canal. So pretty cool history.